Hey guys, how are you going? Sam here from Core Electronics and today we're going to take a look at how you can use game pads, game controllers, either Bluetooth or USB ones in your code with Python. So if you've installed RetroPy on your Raspberry Pi, you'll know how easy it is to get started with uh, both USB and Bluetooth game pads. But if you want to use it to control your project that's just a Python script, something like that, which is what a lot of people use the Raspberry Pi for if they're building a robotics um, project, you know, a drone, uh, a monitor, something like that. It's a game control like this provides really good, ready to go, uh, user input, I've got an 8-bit do zero here because it's on my key ring, it's so small. I flipping love this thing, it's so cool. Um, but it can be a little bit tricky knowing how to uh, interpret those commands and turn them into usable input data inside of Python. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do on your Pi is of course update it to the, uh, the most current version of Raspbian, so I put that uh, in there, I've already got mine updated to save us some time, so go ahead and do that um, if in doubt, and then open up your terminal. So I'm going to be using a Bluetooth device for the examples in this because the Bluetooth device is a bit more involved in the connection process. The USB device, you just plug it in and every other step's the same. So I'll go through how to set this up uh, with Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth devices, but if you're just using a USB one, then go ahead and skip ahead to the uh, to the EV dev section. So I'm gonna be using Bluetooth inside the terminal because I feel like it's a lot more intuitive, maybe not intuitive, but it's easier to understand what's going on in our Python script once we've done it in the terminal. And if you're not familiar with terminal, I encourage you to give it a go because it will make everything come together a lot more than just using the GUI. Um, it's a bit more powerful and it gives you these tools to use for your future projects. You can just use the standard Bluetooth tools on the Pi. Um, you don't need anything fancy. And the first thing we're going to do is launch the Bluetooth control um, in terminal here. So we're just going sudo, sudo, sudo uh, Bluetooth CTL. Hit enter and it's going to do a scan of nearby Bluetooth devices. And this is just like activating the Bluetooth client in our terminal. Um, and we can keep entering in commands. So if you've not got a fresh image of Raspberry Pi, perhaps you've got Bluetooth turned off, perhaps um, you know your config settings are gonna be slightly different than a fresh version. So we're going to enter a few commands to just ensure that it's on. So first we're going power on, changing power on succeeded, that's good. Then we're going to go agent on, agent registered. Make sure we're using the default agent. Two thumbs up. Um, that should be fairly straightforward. Now we're going to go scan. So we're going to rescan for Bluetooth devices. Um, you can do this one of two ways. You can either scan it with it off and then turn your gamepad on and initiate another scan, or you can just scan uh, because most devices are going to uh, give it, you know, the device name in the scan. Now, I've, I've in the tutorial, the written content, I've put, you know, do a double scan because it's a, a safer method. Uh, but I know that this uh, 8 bit do controller turns uh, turns on and gives the device name anyway. So turn that guy on. I'm entering it into the keyboard mode. You know, scan on. And then it's going to go through and do a scan of all of the uh, available uh, nearby Bluetooth controllers. So I can see a couple of different uh, a couple of different Bluetooth devices at the moment. And sometimes it may not actually pick up on it. And this is depending on whether it's the, on the Raspberry Pi side or the 8-bit 8 8-bit uh, do side. I have been informed it's 8-bit do. Perhaps someone pointed out that you don't say Nintendo do, you say Nintendo. But if you're saying the word do, it's also spelled D-O, 8-bit do, do. So that's how we're gonna say it, 8-bit do, deal with it. Now I can see it's finished scanning, I've got device E4. And that's the, it says there 8-bit 8 um, 8 do, zero gamepad, which is good. This is good, we found it. Now what we need to do all uh, to pair it is simply type pair and enter in the device's unique address. So in this case I'm going E4, uh, full colon, then I'm going, what was the address again there, 17, and D, 8, 19, 48, 56. And it will come up attempting to pair. Um, I can see the activity light on my 8-bit do controller there. And a little dialog will pop up saying, has requested pairing. Do you wish to accept this request? Yes, I do. Connected successfully. Awesome, awesome. So now that changes to a solid blue and it will vary depending on, can you see that? 
Yeah. It will vary depending on what gamepad you have, but in this case, Solar Blue means connected. Cool, cool. USB devices, plug them into the USB port. Easy as, that's all there is to it. Hence why I'm using a Bluetooth one to go through the extra steps. All right, now let's see if our device is communicating with our Raspberry Pi successfully. With uh, input devices like these, their communications are stored in a folder. So it's in um, the dev input folder. Ah, it's coming up to spring. You can tell my hay fever's kicking in. Um, that's stored in the device input folder. So I'm just gonna exit out of this terminal for a sec. Uh, what we're going to do is list the contents of that folder and we can see all of the different input devices that are there. And then we can actually read out that data, but there's a few more steps required because it's not actually quite that easy. So we're just gonna go ls dev input, input, which is the folder, helps if you can spell input correctly. It's going to list all the devices here. Now I can see event zero, one, two, three, mice, mouse um, are available there. Now if I turn this guy off, I'll hold start. Let's hit that command again. You can see it's acting as the keyboard there. List it again, so I don't have event three. So I know that event three is going to be this device. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that back on. And it's going to flash uh, because it takes a few seconds to pair. Now once that has gone solid, there we go. List again. Event three, so this is event three and that's important, make a note of that. So now we can actually see the communication stream, the raw data by going cat dev input, now then putting your event name. So I'm using event three. And when we press it, we get garbled junk. Garble junk, now garble junk in this case is actually really good. We like garble junk for this because it shows that there is data there, although we can't read it. So what we need to do is use a tool called evdev, which is going to allow us to, uh, to read that data and use it within our Python script. So again, I'm just gonna close this so we don't have to look at that anymore. Probably could clear it, but I'm a little lazy. Um, so you're going to need to install a couple more tools. So follow the, uh, the tools there in the, uh, the written tutorial. You want those ones. So install those, which just make sure you've got all of your Python packages uh, on there, as well as installing evdev. Now, once you have that, I've pre-installed it again to save some time, but hopefully you just get a bunch of successes. It's important to do it in that order because if you try and install evdev before the Python steps, it's gonna give you an error. Uh, so we're going to now run a test script that comes with evdev. So in Python, we're going to the following directory, local library python 2.7, could have pre-written this out in autofilled, but hey. All right, now the script is called evtest.py. And when we run this, it asks for the event which we would like to test with, the event device. So we're going event three, hit enter, say listening for events. When we press buttons, really usable data. We've got timestamps there. We can see the type of input it is. Uh, the key, the code, and the value, and some other things um, along with the synchronization events, which you don't really need to pay attention to, but we can see it's working. It's working! That's good. It's very good. So, going to close that, and we're gonna get mapping the controller inside of Python. All right, so open up your Python um, IDE. Well, I'm going to, I'm gonna make that a bit bigger. How do I do that? Preferences, options, configure. Try and up that font a bit so you guys can actually read that and make sure I can read it. Um, all right, that should be good. Ah, heaps better, there we go. Should be much more readable. So there's three scripts which we're going to be going through. It's going to open up, what have we got there? The raw input. Now, this script is really straightforward. What we're doing is we're importing uh, evdev into our script. Then we're setting up a new object, our gamepad, as input device, and that's part of the evdev module. It uh, grabs all the data from that uh, file where we mentioned it's stored. Um, to start, it prints out the device info for our gamepad. And then the evdev module takes care on this line of actually just continuously looping and looking for that data so we don't have to um, use sections or loops, it's all taken care of there. Uh, and then we're going to print out uh, just categorize event which makes it a little easier to understand. So once you've got that written out, let's hit run, it'll prompt you to save. When I press a button, 
it gives me this same stream of events and data. You can, you can see how it's actually inputting the characters because the particular mode I'm using for the 8-bit do controller is the keyboard mode, which is really good because all of the event types are the same, which we'll get to in a second, rather than them being all different like it is in the gamepad mode, so it just makes it a bit easier. For the particular project I'm working on, it, there's no keyboard, there's no display, so don't even need to worry about the um, you know that issue, but that's all well and good. Cool, cool. So we're going to close that. Um, and so that is how you can determine the raw input, which is really good. So run that again, and I'm gonna, just to clear the screen, I'm gonna point out a couple of key things that we need to watch out for here. I'll drag that over there. So I'm gonna press this, and I can see that there's three different lines which have been triggered for each event. So an event is the press, and then the release again. And we're not too worried, that's the device print up the top there. Um, I'm just gonna delete that. So this is what we're looking for here, that we've got event and then we've got key event, all right? And they're two important bits of data. So what, uh, what you can be doing here is the next script we're actually going to go through and filter it through, um, which is cool. So we can filter out the event types uh, and the codes. So I can see here that is event type, it's a key event because it's acting as a keyboard, which it's just as I would expect. And then here, 36, I've got the uh, event code. So all of these can trigger events, but if I press that, it's gonna give me a different event code than that wouldn't. The event type, uh, heaps of different event types, relative, absolute, depending on what sort of input you're using. So if I press this, I can see it's event code 46, which corresponds to key C. The Y button is event code 23, and there you go. Just cool, so make a note of those um, and draw out a bit of a sketch uh, mapping all of your buttons to the event codes. Write those down uh, because we're going to use them in the next, um, I guess the next config sketch. We're going to be finding out a bit more about our controller. So again, we're going to open up, uh, where's my, my other sketch? Well, oh, that's the wrong one. I definitely should have made that a little bigger, but that's okay, I'm having to, um, filter, there we go, this is what we want. Okay, now exactly the same, but we've added one extra line of code, which is this if statement here. What this does is it filters out the event types. You could see there we had events, we had synchronizing uh, events, and then we've got the key events, and it filters it by event type. So if you're using a different controller, it may use absolute events, in which case you need ABS or REL, uh, you can check out some more of those on the EV Dev website. I'll put a link into the tutorial. Um, so just click on that and follow that. Uh, but what this is gonna do is just reduce the noise in all of that data, make it a little easier to see. So when I press it, and they get two events for the press and then the release of each button, which is really cool. So I can see a lot more clearly, I've got the code 23, um, the values, so one or zero. Now you'll notice as well that I'm just printing the event, not categorize event. And that's because when you categorize, the main difference in the data reader, instead of being one or zero, it classifies as an up or down. So it sort of streamlines things a bit. And that can be good, but because it's in our script, it's a lot easier to look for the one and the zero than it is for a string. So um, we, I, one and zero is heaps easier to work with when you're just talking about digital controls. So that's what we're gonna work with. All right, so I can see now, you got 46, 32, 18, 33, start, they all do stuff and they all correspond to the keyboard inputs, which again, you can work around or you can disable if you want, but it's not, it's not too big of a deal. So I'm gonna kill that again. Um, so by now, we've got our event types, we've got all of the event codes and the event val uh, values, which are really just, you know, ones and zeros. So they're pretty straightforward. But if you had analog joysticks, for example, you need to work out some more detailed mapping for those. So I'm gonna go here. And I've got a script here which just uses some simple mapping. So I've got some variables here, um, which I've gotten those codes in and filled those in. So you can see my A, B, X, Y, up, down, and so on and so forth. Exactly the same thing. I'm filtering it um, by uh, the event type key. And then I'm also filtering it with the event value being that I only want it to activate on a press, not a release. You could add some more logic in there if you wanted to use that release or you want to use the hold feature. That'll come into play as well, but you know, it works pretty well. And you can see X, a Y, B, A, up, down, left, right, 
triggers, triggers, start, select. And I actually wanted to leave the keyboard input in here because I think it actually highlights what the Bluetooth controller is doing. It's really easy to look at Bluetooth device and think, well, they just magically send data and somehow we can interpret it. But no, it's a keyboard. And you can follow this exact same concept with um, an actual keyboard if you didn't want to use the built-in um, you know, Python uh, handling, then you could use EV Dev. It works for any uh, in standard input device, which is really, really neat. And from there, you can just, um, well, I guess you can use it however you like. So if you wanted to control a robot, for example, then every time you registered that left press, you could just correspond that to a, a motor drive. Or uh, at the moment, I'm building a big, um, big giant pixel matrix game. So I'm going to be using uh, this same part of this same script and control some arcade figures, so whether it's Snake or you know a, a, a Pong type thing, whatever it is, I'm gonna be using it for that. And I just wanted to put this tutorial together because it, uh, I did a little bit of searching around on the easiest way to do this, and there was a lot of, not misinformation, but just definitely not easy ways to do this. And I feel like this is really, really easy. Anyone should be able to follow this um, and then implement it into their Python script. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, check out some more of our Raspberry Pi tutorials. Hopefully I'll have this project up soon, uh, which will be awesome. And check out more of our tutorials uh, at core-electronics.com.au. I'll see you next time, guys.